I just want to sort of situate um, myself in this whole um, philanthropic uh, landscape. I was um, the recipient of an act of philanthropy. When I was growing up, I grew up in a very, uh, in an impoverished um, uh, area um, where everybody was poor. My family was poor, everybody that I grew up was poor. We didn't have electricity, we didn't have running water, we didn't have any social um, facilities. I didn't wear shoes until I was 10. You know, so it was real, what you really call poverty. But while we were surviving in that context, I still saw a lot of significant and gallant acts of philanthropy and acts of generosity. And, and that, I, I, I grew up uh, seeing a lot of uh, empathy and, um, and uh, you know, philanthropic actions around me. And I just um, grew up knowing that when you have more than others, you give. When you are elevated higher up, you try to pull up somebody else. And what happened with me was that um, this Swedish woman called Hilda Back, who was a Holocaust survivor and who just wanted to do something to help the needy, uh, wanted to know about the situation in Kenya, and she was told that there were kids who were bright but struggling in school. And she asked to be given a list of names, and she picked me out of a list and started supporting me. And she supported uh, my education at the primary school level and then at the secondary school level and really unblocked me from the, 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 the situation that would have been very, very difficult otherwise. And um, that stayed with me. You know, I went on to become a lawyer. You know, I studied law at the University of Nairobi and I was uh, lucky enough to go to um, one of the best universities, you know, Harvard uh, University. And at the end of that, I started thinking, I need to return this act of generosity. And the way I chose to do that was actually, I keep telling people, I wasn't very creative in philanthropy. I just copied what Hilda Bach had done. I decided this woman helped me. I am going to replicate her action by helping kids because I kept going back home. Uh, and by this time I had um, led a very successful life and um, uh, which was not enjoyed by many of my compatriots uh, and, and childhood friends. I had gotten a good job with the United Nations and I, I felt that I had an obligation to do this for somebody else. And I went back to my village and I decided to replicate what Hilda Bach had done except that I decided to help several children and I decided to start a foundation. And um, there was nothing more appropriate for me to do than to name the foundation after the woman who had pulled me out of this poverty. And that is why my foundation is called the Hilda Back Education Foundation. And um, the work that we do is simple. We uh, help kids at the secondary school level because now primary school level is paid for by the government. But the secondary school level is still the crunch and a lot of kids can't make their way through secondary school. So what I have uh, decided to do is to focus on that sort of bridge between uh, primary school and the university. Um, so that's what my foundation does. And um, we've been very lucky um, to support a lot of uh, needy children. Right now, we are, um, this year, I think we're supporting about 400 kids. And this is secondary school, it's quite expensive. So we are, we are, we are, we are paying quite high bills. But apart from that, um, being a human rights activist and um, you know, being an employee of the United Nations and working to spread human rights, I'm increasingly focusing on what we call economic and social rights, to make sure, what people call the welfare rights, to make sure that governments step in and take up their responsibility in providing these crucial services. And so our big campaign theme has been on education being a human right. Our slogan is education is a human right. So apart from doing an act of charity, um, I have decided that I really uh, need to um, 
raise the, the, the profile of our work um, by embracing advocacy and making sure that governments in Africa step up and uh, provide these needed social services for their children. And um, I've been supported in that effort by, again, something that just happened by chance. Uh, somebody heard about my story, and she happened to be uh, a filmmaker in uh, Hollywood. And she did a film about the work that we were doing. And the film did very well. Uh, the film is called A Small Act. And it premiered at uh, Sundance and uh, has uh, taken me to several other um, uh, film festivals around the world. And through that work, I have felt that um, I have been given a platform that I need to exploit. And this platform is to talk about philanthropy, is to talk about uh, the need to give, is to talk about the need to uplift our societies and not to wait for uh, handouts from outside. And one of the things that uh, we were discussing earlier today and that uh, Becky knows is very close to my heart is about defining philanthropy because a lot of people think that you have to be fabulously wealthy to be a philanthropist. In actual fact, that's a fallacy that has been proven wrong and that we are proving wrong day by day and that my presence here um, uh, uh, proves. It's very, very important to give when you have but even when you don't have, it is important to know that you can, and that's why our film was very appropriately um, uh, titled A Small Act. We can help our societies through a multiplicity of small acts. And for people who are in um, Africa, uh, we have big problems and we need to know that we don't have to wait for handouts, there are so many things that we can do in our own individual capacities.